Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the delta and y conversion. So we will see how we can convert a specific delta format to a y configuration in this form. So we will see that in, in general form and also we will discuss some examples to illustrate the concept in great detail. So let's first discuss about the networks. We have the delta network which is shown here. It is also called the Pi network, which because if you redraw this and also look at the nodes A, B, and C, this looks like a pi. Now the other one is the uh, the Y network, which is also called a star, but it can be also drawing like that, which is called a T network. So it depends, of course, what you prefer to say about these network names. So we have the delta and Y or pi T networks. Okay. Now there are some expressions we need to make. In order to go from one format to another format so one network to another format i will first designate the uh, or de determine the impedances in this case in general form between each between two nodes so in this case i start with a and b that's the parallel combination of the zc which is this impedance and the series combination of za and zb so that formula you can see that the first product then the summation of these three that's shown here we can do that also for the Y network. That is uh, quite straightforward because you see between node A and B, Z1 and Z2, just a series combination. Looking now at B and C, the nodes B and C, you can see ZA is now in parallel with ZB and ZC. Now the formula is shown here again, the summation in the denominator. Now for the Y network between B and C, that's just Z2 plus Z3. Now the final one is A and B, A and C I must say, that is actually ZB in parallel with the combination, series combination of ZA and ZC. That formula is shown here. And also for the Y connection between node A and Z, that's just Z1 plus Z3. Okay, now we need to make a conversion, that means we need to set these two and also these two, and also these two equal to each other and also produce the equations to convert the Z A Z B Z E's to Z1, Z2, Z3 combinations. The first one, we set the expressions for Z A B, these two, equal to each other. That means the following, so this part is equal to that part. And that is also given like that. If you work out the parentheses, you see this expression. And we call now this equation number one and we will use this later. In a similar form, we set, set the expression for Z B C, these two together, equal to each other. So we have this and also again work out the parentheses and you get now this expression and now also call this equation number two for later. The final one is setting the expression for ZAC equal to each other. That's shown here and now also work out the parentheses here and we get now this and this is now our equation number three. So what is the next step? Now we need to make a conversion from one form to another. So for that we can in this case subtract Equ uh, equation number two from equation number one. So that means actually the following. That means equation number one minus the equation number two, that's shown here on the left side, and also between the parentheses. That means this expression minus this expression. The denominator are exact same. That means we need to do it with the, something with the numerators. So that means we get now this. And you also see that here the Z2 and Z2 are uh, cancelling each other out, so Z1 minus Z3 for the left side, and you get now for the numerator here and denominator this one. This is now the expression, and this is now equation number four. Now we will now add the equation number three and the equation number four we just got. That will produce this, so Z1 plus Z3 plus Z1 minus Z3. Now you see again a Z3 and the minus E3 eat each other up. That means we get now two times the Z1 and this together will also we convert it together because ZAB, ZA and ZB, the product of that, it's also shown here but with a nine minus sign. So this also will go. So we will have this. Now you see here two times ZB, ZC divided by the again the summation of the three impedances of ZA, ZB and ZC is equal to two times Z1. Now you can now divide out the Z, I mean the two, and you get now the first expression for converting the 
delta network to the y network. You see the z1, this is equal to the z b times dc, the product, divided by the summation of these three impedances. That's shown here. Okay, let's now bring this here together. I'll talk about the convergence also for other impedances, z2 and z3. So we will now go from delta to y. That is the conversion we will now discuss. The first expression we already discussed determined from our analysis. In a similar form, you can now do the Z2, the formula is shown here, so I will leave details out. It's really a similar analysis, and Z3 is this. So, what you actually see here is you can recognize the formulas easily by saying each impedance in the Y connection, so you can actually place this in here in the delta uh, configuration. So each impedance in the Y connection or Y uh, format is equal to the product of the impedances in the two adjacent delta branches. That means the product here is the ZB and ZC. So since this is the Z1 here, if you place it here, and I divide it by the product of, I mean the sum, excuse me, sum of the all three delta impedances. For example, let's also look at the Z2. Z2 is here, and that is the equal then the product of the two adjacent impedances, that is the ZA and ZC, that's shown here, divided by the summation of all the delta impedances. And also similar for Z3, that's here. So these ZA and ZB are actually next to Z3, and then divided by the summation. So you can actually recognize this formula in this form directly. Now you can also do the other conversion, going from the Y to the delta, that's the other one. And that, there, there are the form formulas. Again, I will leave the details out, but you can also recognize this in a similar form like this, which you say is each impedance in the delta connection or delta form is equal to the sum of all possible products, taking two at a time, divided by the opposite y impedance. Now let's go through this one by one. So if I want this, let's say ZA, this one, that is equal to all the possible products, that means Z1 times Z2, Z1 times Z3, and Z2 times Z3, that's actually shown here, and then divided by of this, which you see opposite of that one, opposite of this one is Z1, because if you place this in here, the ZA will be opposite of Z1. In a similar form for ZB, you can see that it's also from the, the numerator here, exact same, only the changes the denominator. Okay, now we have now also this, which is now considering only pure resistors. You see now here the delta again, and also the Y connection in this form. And these are the formulas when you only consider resistors. And these are the formulas also when you only consider resistors for the Y delta conver conversion. This is for the delta Y conversion. Let's look at some examples. It's always uh, more uh, detailed and handy to discuss this using numbers. We have now this delta connected circuit and we have these values for R, A, R, B and R, C. And we would like to convert this to an equivalent Y connect circuit. What do we do? We know that we need to go from this delta to this Y connected circuit and we have for the delta to Y conversion the following formulas. We have our R, A, R, B and R, C and we know we need to go to R1 R2 and R3 using this formula. So this is actually straightforward, just substitute the values we have here. That's then we have RB and RC just 50 times 110, given here, divided by the summation. And also for the others, first this one, we get here 27.5 ohm. The other one is in a similar form, and you get now here 22 ohms. And for R3, you get 10 ohms. Okay, that's now our conversion. That means going back actually here that we have here 27.5 ohms, 22 ohms and 10 ohms. Okay, looking now at another example, then we will now make the conversion from Y connected circuit to a, a equivalent delta connected circuit. Again, now this, this is given, R1, R2, R3 here, 15, 25 and 75. That means we need to go here to a delta connection. That means in this form. Okay, we need to look at R A, R B, and R C. Now we know that delta Y, I mean Y delta conversion requires these three formulas. I will substitute now here 
the given values and that will now give us here 225 we'll get we have 135 and we get here 45. okay that's for the example number two now looking now at an example number three which is a more practical example you see here a uh, uh, circuit with two dc volt sources vs1 and vs2 we also see five uh, actually we see three this is here r1 r2 and r3 and we see here a combination of a delta and a y connection and rx rx and rx they're all equal so we have actually here a balanced delta configuration which is 18 ohms and we have an rm 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 again three times the same resistor for that that is equal to 12 ohms what we want is the current here so calculate the current here and we will now use for this circuit the delta y conversion to make this calculation easy it's also possible to do in a different way without this conversion but this will also illustrate the concept here for the circuit so what we do first uh, now you will recognize here first the calculations that we can make a delta y con uh, conversion so this delta which is composed of these three rx's we can convert that now since these are all equal to each other the formulas are uh, simpler than before so that means actually the following you get now again this circuit you see the following happening the rm here will be now in parallel to a new resistor between these two nodes which is then this rx which will be divided by three since these are all exact same that is uh, the effect of the balanced uh, delta configuration the similar is happening actually here because that between these two nodes and also between these two nodes that's how shown so we get actually exact same values here here so rm will be in parallel with rx over three also here and also here now we can calculate this new resistor also here also here that means that we have the following and i call this just r equivalent and i also redraw the circuit such as which is a little bit familiar uh, we have a familiar form we have seen in the previous examples what is now the r equivalent resistance that's equal to rm times the rx over 3 divided by rm plus rx over 3 this is the formula for two resistors in parallel we know what we have which is 12 times 18 over 3 divided by 12 plus 18 over 3 that will be exactly 4 that means if we have 4 ohms here 4 ohms there 4 ohms there we have here 2 ohms 2 ohms and 8 ohms that was already given now we can now determine now the current here it that is one of the options using mesh current analysis so i will mesh make a mesh here i call this ia and a new mesh here i call this ib now we will now go for each mesh or each loop set up the equation for loop a i start at this node and then make the full circle that means minus vs1 and then plus r1 and then also r equivalent in parentheses times ia and then r2 plus r equivalent also again in parentheses times r ia minus ib because ib is here in the opposite direction of ia and it will be equal to zero okay looking at the values we have my, uh, here 40 so there will be the minus 40 this is 2 ohms this is 4 ohms we just calculated this is 2 this is 4 also so we have now this we have an equation now with two unknowns here we can simplify this further can now uh, bring all the IA's together and also all the IB's together and also this minus 40 to the right side you get now this equation or expression that can be again simplified by dividing out everything left and right hand side by 2 you get now this 6 IA minus 3 times IB is 20 and let's call this equation number 1 now similar for we do for loop B we start here it doesn't matter where you start actually you can also start here there it doesn't matter I just start here I see first plus VS2 and then r2 plus r equivalent in the parentheses times ib minus ia because now ib is our reference and ia is fighting back or is in the opposite direction and then we have i3 and i equivalent uh, together at times ib that will be again equal to zero now when you substitute the values also in here this is 60 volts we know r2 and r equivalent we also know R3, which is 8. Now we again do the similar four here in the format IA first and IB and then equal to a constant, which must be then this replaced to the right side. You get this. So you can see that this is 6, 
6 times minus IA and you get now 6 times IB but you also have here 12 the IB means 18 to be minus 60 you can now divide this by 6 in this case you get the minus IA plus 3 times IB will be the minus 10 and that's now our equation number 2 now we will now bring these two equations together that's all shown here and then add them up because we can now add them up directly because one of the parameters will be then gone and add them up together there will be then 5 times IA is equal to exact then it means IA is 2 amps so we have now the loop current here and since we know IA we can also calculate IB from one of the equations here so we can calculate IB I take this equation so I do minus 10 plus IA because I will bring it to the right side divide by 3 now we I know IA that is just 2 so it will be the minus 10 plus 2 divide by 3 and that will give us minus 8.3 amps okay thus we need to now look at the value of the current here IT in this case is also here that is in the same direction as IB but is in the opposite direction of IA that means I t is equal to i b minus i a which is then equal actually to this one which is minus 8.8 8 over 3 minus 2 is equal to approximately minus 4.667 amps okay that's the calculation we bring it here and also now verify this using the simulations this is a circuit in simulator you see here the rx rx and also here rx that's actually this delta configuration RM here you see that actually short, uh, given in the T format which is also here in the Y format R1, R2 and also R3 and also the VS1 and VS2 you see here indeed that the IT here this current is minus 4.667 amps so it is according to specifications so again verified if you have any questions comments about these examples please let me know I will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video take care